In this video, I'm finally going to get a chance to try out RDU Pilot's sailing feature. If installed correctly, it should enable any old RC sailboat to autonomously navigate through a series of pre-programmed waypoints, regardless of the wind direction. Last year I built my first sailboat using a 3D printed mold. The hull was formed by covering the mold in fiberglass and epoxy. It got cured in a vacuum bag, and then the mold was removed by heating it up and pulling it out. I also used 3D printed molds to form the keel. It was made from scrap lead and resin. Instead of using a canvas sail like a normal sailboat, this one is going to use a wing sail. I machined it out of pink insulation foam on my CNC router. That gets mounted to the boat on bearings so that it can pivot freely, and it uses what's called a wing sail elevator to control the angle of attack. So this boat didn't work very well for a couple of reasons that I'll get into later, but one of which is that the keel didn't provide enough riding force to keep the boat upright. Bye! Oh, and it's way tipped over! <laughs> wow, sailboats are, uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I have this knob that controls the sail angle right here. Whoa! <laughs> do you know how to sail? I know. I don't. Ah, my boat is a failure. My temporary fix for this was to turn it into a trimaran, and this at least allowed it to sail a little bit, but it was a very low performance vessel. It could sail across the wind decently well, but it really had no hope of being able to sail upwind. So step one for our modifications is going to be to ditch the old keel. When I was designing this keel, I based its size off what looked about right for a full-size sailboat. The problem is that when you scale down a model, its weight decreases by the cubed root while its dimensions scale down linearly. So what this means is that if you took a full-scale sailboat and shot it with the Honey I Shrunk the Kids ray gun, it would probably just fall over, just like my sailboat did. This is why RC sailboats have ridiculously long keels. Cutting the keel off was pretty hard because it was held on with epoxy and two 5 8 inch steel bolts. Of course those were way overkill as fasteners, but I just used them for the weight. So this boat used to have a fin keel, but now I'm going to give it a bulb keel. Bulb keels can weigh less while simultaneously having a stronger lever arm that helps keep the boat upright. I 3D printed my bulb keels bulb out of Grey Pro resin on the Form 3 Plus. Resin is so much more heat resistant than FDM materials. Hmm. Wow, it worked. The molten lead didn't even deform it. But just to be safe, I stuck it in water and kept filling it up bit by bit. And I only had lead explode in my face once. This is just the front half of the bulb, so I had to do it all over again for the back half. Then both sides fit together over an aluminum bar, and I used fairing compound to smooth out the seam. I 3D printed some leading and trailing edges to make the aluminum bar more streamlined, and glued those on. Then I put a layer of 2 ounce fiberglass over everything to really lock it all together. 2 ounce glass is super great for this sort of thing because it conforms to all those tight contours really easily. I covered the bulb itself in probably a minimum of 3 layers of glass to help keep the two halves from coming apart and to prevent the resin prints from ever cracking. Then all that got quite a bit of fairing and sanding. Next I 3D printed this blue plastic piece that the aluminum bar would slot into. That got glued into the base of the hull. Once the glue dried, the keel slid in and then I made a nice fillet around the joint with fairing compound. And finally, that got a layer of paint to conclude the keel build. The next problem we have to address is the size of the rudder. It's too small. The fix is relatively straightforward. I just soldered on a piece of copper plate to increase the surface area. This sort of thing probably should be done with a torch, but I just did it with a heat gun and two soldering irons. Then I cleaned up the mess with a Dremel. Before installing the autopilot, I wanted to test out the new keel and rudder with the boat under fully manual control. So it's uh, hopefully going to stay upright a lot better. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, what are you doing? I bet you're staring at 8 million little tiny LED lights that are tricking you into thinking you're hanging out in a tree with me. The internet is great at leading people onto these parasocial relationships that give them a temporary sense of social gratification. But your primordial brain is supposed to be chasing squirrels through the woods with your fellow tribesmen. In this day and age, people are really lacking the social support they need. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. Just talking to one of their therapists can really help put you in a better mood. BetterHelp has an amazing algorithm that'll help pair you with a therapist, usually within 48 hours. And if it doesn't work out the first time, you can switch therapists whenever you want. With BetterHelp, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable. There's chat, phone, and video call. You can message your therapist anytime, and you can even schedule a live chat for later. BetterHelp is all done remotely, and that makes it much easier to squeeze therapy into your busy schedule. If you think you might benefit from therapy, you can click on the link in the description box or go to betterhelp.com slash rctestflight. Using this link helps support the channel, which is super cool, but it'll also give you 10% off of your first month there. There have now been over 4 million people that have used BetterHelp. It's definitely worth trying out because improving your mental health can improve every aspect of your life. Now back to the video. 
Here we go, moment of truth. Will it even float? It might be heavier than it was before. It feels really heavy. Oh, it floats. Amazing. I'm feeling good about this. The sail rotates easily now. Ground effect vehicles coming in hot. <laughs> uh, the sail is the same as before. Oh, wow. Damn. It turns well. Look at that. It can tack. That's nice. a, it couldn't do that before. Yeah, it's way better, man. Yeah. Look at that. It's moving, man. Yeah, this it's is great. going fast. I'm kind of going uh, slightly into the wind now as well. Mm. I'm going to do another tack. Whoa. Oh, yeah. It was ripping that time. I know this doesn't look very impressive, and that's because it's really not. Most RC sailboats can go way faster than this, but it's a huge improvement from before, and we're still not done with all the modifications. There also just wasn't that much wind here, so we decided to take it to the windward facing shore. This is where it really picked up some speed. The increased wind velocity helped a ton and the boat was going much faster than I had ever seen it go before. Still nowhere near as fast as some of the high performance model sailboats, but this one weighs a lot more so I never really expected it to go that fast. Now that I knew this boat had potential, it was time to make it autonomous. RD Pilot supports the use of a wind vane so that the boat knows which direction the apparent wind is coming from. The wind vane actually isn't completely necessary. You can just manually tell the flight controller which heading the wind is coming from, but getting consistent live readings from the boat is going to be much more accurate, especially if the wind direction changes over the course of the waypoint mission. For my wind vane, I'm using this AS5600 Hall Effect encoder. Basically, this thing just measures the orientation of a magnet placed directly over the chip. So I designed a little housing with a bearing and a bolt in the middle to act as the shaft. Then I glued a diametrically magnetized magnet onto the end of the bolt. By the way, if you want the CAD for this wind vane or any other part of this boat, you're in luck because the native design files are available at the Onshape link in the description. Onshape is a cloud-based CAD program that is free for hobbyists, so just sign up using my link and you can edit or download all the native design files. RDU Pilot doesn't officially support this sensor yet, so I'm using its analog output feature, and I added a little RC filter on there to smooth out the signal a bit. Here you can see the magnet, and it gets positioned directly over the Hall Effect sensor. Those two halves get screwed together, and the whole wind vane assembly gets mounted on the front of the boat. The vane itself is just made from a thin piece of foam, and I glued a nut onto the front to balance it. It needs to be balanced, since the boat isn't always going to be perfectly upright. Okay, on to the next problem. Sailboats need to be aerodynamically and hydrodynamically balanced, so that when the wind blows on them from the side, they don't turn towards or away from the wind too much. There are two terms to know here. The first is the center of pressure. When the wind blows on a boat, the center of pressure is the center of all the drag force combined, or in other words, it's the net force of the wind. The next term is called the center of lateral resistance. This is basically just the same concept, but for water resistance, not air resistance. If you push into the boat directly on the center of lateral resistance, the boat won't turn at all, it will just go straight sideways. If you push behind the center of lateral resistance, the boat will turn towards the pushing force. If the boat is designed so that the center of lateral resistance and center of pressure is in the same spot, it will naturally sail straight when the wind is hitting it from the side. Most manned sailboats want the center of pressure to be slightly behind the center of lateral resistance. This is called wind helm, and it's desirable for a few reasons. Mainly, when a big gust of wind hits the boat, it will turn into the wind, which makes the gust less likely to knock the boat over. Also, if a sailor falls overboard, the boat will naturally turn into the wind and the sails will stall, causing the boat to stop. For my autonomous boat, I'd prefer the center of pressure and center of lateral resistance to be more or less in line so that the boat tracks straight and the autopilot has to do less work. My original design had the sail too far forward, which would give the boat a natural tendency to turn away from the wind. This is almost never desirable, so I needed to move my sail backwards. To do this, I had to cut a new deck on the CNC router. I used quarter inch plywood and added a honeycomb pattern to keep the weight down. Here's the difference between the old deck and the new deck. You can see how I moved the wing sail mounting hole backwards by a few inches to get the center of pressure more in line with the center of lateral resistance. I also added a cutout for a waterproof electronics storage container. That is going to be housing the RDU Pilot flight controller, which is one of the Maytech boards, along with the RFD900XU, which I'm using as the control and telemetry radio. The boat is going to be powered by four 2170 lithium ion cells that are mounted in the base. I got some UFL to SMA extensions to mount the antennas outside of the enclosure. The enclosure got siliconed in place to keep the hull mostly watertight, and I mounted the GPS and compass module up towards the bow to keep it away from the power wires. Next came the RDU Pilot setup. This was basically the same as a normal rover boat configuration, with the exception of having to kind of calibrate the wind vane so that the readings line up with the apparent wind direction. 
and that pretty much concludes the upgrades. Same as before, the air propeller on the stern is set up so that I can manually control it and bring the boat home if the wind dies, but it's also connected to the autopilot, I'll talk more about that later. The rudder and the air motor's thrust vectoring motor mount use separate servos for redundancy, but are connected to the same servo output on the flight controller. Now it's finally time to test it. I brought it out to the lake and there was a really strong offshore wind. Offshore winds are nice because they give you high wind speeds without large wind waves. The downside is that the wind is usually more turbulent since it's flowing through all the obstacles on land. So at first I just had the boat in manual mode, controlling the rudder and wingsail elevator manually. It seemed to be working surprisingly well, but what really surprised me is how fast it was seemingly able to go upwind, and how steep of an angle it was able to sail into the wind at. For those of you who don't know, sailboats can't go directly into the wind, or at least normal ones can't. If you have a rotary sail, you can. I made a video about that a few months ago. Go check it out if you haven't seen it already. But normal sailboats have to sail into the wind at an angle. All the haters say it, saying my wing sail can't go fast, it's going plenty fast. This one seemed to have no difficulties sailing at a 45 degree angle into the wind, which is pretty decent performance I think. It was also able to go downwind at a pretty good clip, but that's a lot less impressive. Next it's finally time to try out auto mode, so I uploaded a series of waypoints. The wind is blowing pretty much straight from the south here, and the boat seemed to do a pretty good job at tacking by itself to make it to an upwind waypoint if the waypoint was at a steeper angle than the sail no-go angle. So that was really cool to see. And the most impressive part is that this is with pretty much all the default RD Pilot settings. The normal steering controller had to be tuned, but I really didn't touch any of the sailing specific parameters. It just kind of worked out of the box, so that's awesome. That said, there was one big issue, and that was that this boat usually can't make it through a tack without having to use its motor. Tacking is when you turn into the wind, and the boat just didn't have enough momentum to make it all the way through the turn. There's a parameter you can set in RD Pilot where if the boat's speed drops below a certain value, the motor will turn on. So during this waypoint mission, the motor would momentarily come on when the boat was trying to make it through the apex of a turn. If there was an RD pilot setting that would make the boat jibe instead of tack, I think I could get away without having a motor at all. Jibing is when you turn downwind instead of upwind, but this feature doesn't exist, so at this point I'm still pretty reliant on the motor. I don't want to make this video too long, so in the next video I'm going to talk more about all the flight controller's sailing features, and what it's actually doing. And I'll also attempt a multi-mile waypoint mission to see what this boat is really capable of. So don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.